Let me get introduced now our panel this evening on the buck stops here. We've got Jay Panda. He's, of course, representing the BJD government on the panel this evening. We've got NC Saxena, who is, of course, headed the Saxena committee, which has had very, very strong uh, views on both the Vedanta and the POSCO projects, uh, doesn't believe that they've uh, met the conditions that they ought to have. Uh, we've got senior lawyer Krishnan Venugopal with us right here on the sets of the buck stop here to take a look at this, uh, this concept of whether uh, a human barricade can, in fact, be declared illegal, also weighing in on the legal aspect of that debate, senior advocate Dushan Dave, and one of the best known environmental activists of this country, Sunita Narayan. And of course, we're taking a look at the POSCO project as an example of how every land acquisition uh, project really in India in recent times has run uh, into an obstacle, hit a stone wall. Even the Tatas today have had a setback uh, with the Shingur project and the farmers now lining up to get their land back for that project that never took off. Let me start with Jay Panda if I can. I understand when a government says that, look, this was a project that has all the technical clearances. This was cleared by, not just by the state government, it's been cleared by the environment ministry at the centre. But when an administration decides that a protest is illegal, these have been peaceful protests, these have been women, and yes, the children who come along because, you know, children go along with their mothers, they've done nothing not, you know, violent, they've not thrown stones at the police, they've not picked up any kind of weapons. Isn't this undemocratic for your government to come in and declare this protest to be illegal? Nobody has the right to take the law into their own hands. And as you pointed out, the procedures have been going on for several years. This project is already many years overdue. I want to make a point here that the Orissa government has gone to extraordinary lengths to ensure that there is no violence. There have been no lati charges, there have been no shootings. A great deal of patience has been shown to accommodate every viewpoint. And have the protesters respected that space? Because from all accounts, they've been peaceful as well. The majority of the local residents have accepted the enhanced uh, rehabilitation packages and, and the, the formalities and the legalities have been complied with. Let me point something out to you. Out of the 4,000 acres for this project, 3,500 acres is government land. Now, of the very small amount of land, which is uh, private land, the majority of the people have accepted the displacement packages. Now, the displacement package also involves not just money, but also three-bedroom houses for each of the displaced people. It also has compensation for people who are not landowners, but landless laborers. Now, if a small but very vocal minority decides to take the law into their own hand, uh, you know, I... At a certain point, the government has to ensure that the law of the land must hold. You've actually, before I get the others in quickly, Jay, you've actually, in a sense, inadvertently uh, zoned in on the hub of the debate, that the majority want the project, but there is a minority that doesn't. Now, imagine that you were, li uh, you were living in a neighborhood of Delhi where there was a certain project coming in. It could be a metro line. It could be a flyover. We all remember uh, the Pedder Road flyover project in Mumbai that was actually stopped after a number of residents uh, in elite Bombay did not want it. Does this happen with the rich? Does this happen with the middle class? Where we have the space to say, no, we don't want this? Or does this only happen with the poor of India? It ought to happen everywhere. And let me explain what I mean by this. You know, the fact is, again, let me reiterate, this project is, is several years overdue. Everybody, different governments at the center, the state government, they have all supported it. There is, you know, this is not the only area in the country that has a land acquisition problem. All over the country there are problems. But do the minorities have rights? Yes. If even one person does not want forcible acquisition of his land, so it, let me can come the to, state just brush aside his reservations? I'm just coming to that point. I think even the most vocal opponents of land acquisition <coughs> today are coming around to a viewpoint that if 70% of the displaced people agree to a plan, then the balance 30% have to also comply with it. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free NDTV.com/apps.